Hello everybody, I'm Nikki Dinky, and I'm excited to join you live today because I've been thinking so much about Thanksgiving and of course we're all in this fall state of mind. And I thought I would share with you really one of the most popular recipes from my site. It's my acorn squash bread. You might be at this moment thinking, hmm, I've never heard of acorn squash bread. Well, you probably haven't, but you have heard of pumpkin bread and you have heard of zucchini bread and other breads that really use a vegetable for really its moisture content mainly um, to make a really fun bread. This is a quick bread. There's no yeast, there's no rising. That also means that it's really kind of foolproof. You can't mess it up too easily and you definitely won't mess it up because I'm going to show you all my tricks and tips. Also during this broadcast, I would love to interact with you guys. It's really fun to actually be live. So, you know, put comments in there. Tell me just how your day is going. And of course, if you have any questions, you can ask me too. But I'm gonna get right into prepping this thing because I know that once you're looking at this, if you haven't done a lot of squash prep, you might be a little concerned. How do I even break into this thing? Because it is really, really hard. So like any good winter squash, the number one thing that you want to think about, and if you hear little babies off camera, those are my twins, I promise they are well taken care of having some breakfast. Um, there's always little voices around my house. <laughs> that's, um, that's how I work best, is with little voices in the background. So anyway, this squash, like a lot of winter squashes, it rolls and it's kind of crazy. And so the number one thing that you can do to kind of help yourself is give yourself a solid base to work with. I'm gonna do that by cutting off this very end. I find that it's the easiest place to take a little off. It does not affect the look of it if you're gonna later kind of serve this, maybe halved or in some other preparation. And now look, I've got something that hopefully will move around on me because the big concern here when it is all wobbly is that you start to get your knife in here and it wobbles, oop, and it slips and whew, I just gave myself chills and I was just kind of pretending there. But you know that, you know, working with knives can be really dangerous. So giving yourself a nice good surface to work with is the number one tip to hopefully help you not have one of those scary moments. Um, the next thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually dig the point of my knife into the squash. I wanna get access into it and then I can really apply some pressure. An acorn squash actually has a pretty hollow center, which makes it easier to work with because really we can cut one side, cut the other, and then it will come right open. Let me show you what I mean. So I got my knife right in that top and I just kind of go down and now I'm gonna use my knife to push like this. And as you can see, my hand's not in there anywhere. There's nothing happening. And then I'm gonna turn it around and I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. I really feel like acorn squash is one of the easier winter squashes to cut. So if you're kind of having an introduction to this world of winter squash, maybe start with this guy. And look guys, whoop, ta-da! And so you can serve this half, you can just roast it up. We're gonna be doing something a little extra special with it today. But really, um, you know, by doing it that way, you're still gonna have a great presentation if you want to do it like that. So now I'm just gonna scoop out these seeds, just like a pumpkin. Yes, you can also eat these seeds. Um, and while I am scooping this, I thought maybe I could take a question out there. Stephanie um, is behind the camera. Let me know who's out there, what they're doing, and if they have any questions. B Brady Photography, 43, loves hey. your top. <laughs> <laughs> she all loves my top? Oh, thank you. Yeah. I do, I felt like I was going for, I don't really know what this is. It's a little bit of a Beetlejuice moment, but I was kind of feeling it for you guys. And how is everyone else out there? Is it cold where you guys are? Are you in the total fall spirit? Kind of almost winter spirit? The holidays are coming. And I'd love to also hear, what are your Thanksgiving plans? You know, what are you making? I'm starting to think about my own menu, more for Christmas than Thanksgiving, because we'll be hosting Christmas at my house. But I'd love to hear what you guys are making too. Anything yeah. else out there, Stephanie? Natalie wants to know how long the squash bakes for. So the squash is gonna go in a 425 oven. Just let me wipe my hands. And I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil and salt on here. It's gonna go in at 425 for about 45 minutes. And the great thing about this is that you're just looking to get it really tender because we're going to be pureeing this up. So you really can cook it kind of as long as you want, uh, just until it's super, super soft so that we can puree it. But as you can see, a little olive oil, a little salt, because even though we're gonna be doing this into a bread, into a baked sweet thing, we still are working with a vegetable and we still want that vegetable to taste good. So we're gonna use a lot of salt. So four, uh, 425 oven for about 45 minutes. 
Let me put that in there, I'll show you the rest, and don't worry, I already cooked one up so you won't be here for the next 45 minutes. So this just goes right in. And then the next thing that we're gonna be doing is getting the rest of our ingredients. Let's start with our dry ingredients. So here I have got one and two thirds cup all-purpose flour, and then baking powder, baking soda, and salt. You know, there's a lot of recipes that call for baking powder, baking soda. In this recipe, we want both. We want the leavening from them, and we want a nice crumb that we're actually going to get. Oh, it's has got a, a question. We have a good question. <laughs> I see her raise her hand in the background, so I know that that means out there you guys have some questions. So let me know. Um, when I'm at the grocery store, how do I know which one is ready to be cooked? How do you pick a good squash? Oh, so, you know, <laughs> the squash that just went in there, I think I've got one more. Or maybe, well, I thought I had another one floating around here. Uh, well, here it is. So this is actually an example of not my favorite type of squash, but so the green of the acorn squash is always going to be present. You're always going to see an acorn squash that's mostly green. But what you want to see is this little bit of orange starting to peek through. I would call this guy a little underripe. He's not going to be the sweetest of the bunch, which is fine in this preparation because we're going to be adding some sugar here. But one that has a nice maybe quarter orange spot, you know, a quarter of it is that nice orange color, that's ideal. So anything with that little bit of orange is definitely ideal. And think about what your preparation you're using it in. If you're gonna eat it just raw, you want it on the sweeter side. But if you're gonna be putting it into a bread with some sugar, it's not as important. Now in this bowl with the flour, baking powder, baking soda, and salt, I'm also gonna put in cinnamon, nutmeg, and cloves. You could also use a pumpkin pie spice blend. I know a lot of us tend to have that on hand this time of year for maybe that one pumpkin pie that you make a year. You know, pumpkin pie spice has all those warm fall spices like cinnamon and nutmeg, often clove, maybe allspice, and all those will work in here just great. We're going for a similar kind of warm fall spiced sweet bread. It's gonna be so good. So here's our dry ingredients. And I'm gonna go get my cooked squash. Well, it shouldn't be quotations. It is actually cooked. It just didn't cook as fast as I'm making this seam. This did wanna cook for about 45 minutes. It's been about two minutes, but I cooked one up yesterday to show you guys what it looks like. So here we go. This is our squash that I cooked up before that was been in there for 45 minutes. The number one thing that you wanna know if it's done, you just stick a fork in it. You can see I already tried over there. The fork should go in super easy. Just like when you're making mashed potatoes, you just want the fork to go in and come right out. I'm literally barely pulling it out. And like I said, this is going to be something that's going to get pureed up. So we really don't need, um, we don't need it to be perfect. We just need it to be soft. So you're welcome to go a little extra and just make sure that it's super soft. If you take it out, you're not 100% sure if it's done, cook it a little extra. Now this guy has been sitting on the countertop for a little bit. So he's gonna give me a little bit more trouble as far as scooping this out, but I'm not super concerned. You know, we're looking to buy about a one pound squash. So one of these kind of smaller guys. And at the end of this, I'm hoping for a cup of squash puree. So, you know, most of your squashes are gonna yield a little extra. So even if I don't get every last bit from the squash, I have a feeling that in my food processor, I'm gonna end up with a cup. All right, Stephanie, any other comments or questions out there? I do, I usually have a phone set up so I can really look at it, but I wasn't able to put it up today. But I just, I think it's really cool to interact with you guys. I mean, we do all the time on the Instagram, on the gram, but I think there's something really fun about it live. Um, Katie wants to know if you could use a different squash for this and which one you would recommend. Yeah, so you can definitely use another squash. I'm just gonna start giving this a little pulse before I add in some of my wet ingredients. You know, when you think about um, pumpkin bread, you know, pumpkin is, uh, you know, a type of winter squash, and any of those can be substituted. So you're making a quick bread and you need a cup of wet vegetable puree because it's going to add a lot of moisture to our bread. So, you know, you could use butternut squash puree. You could use spaghetti squash puree, absolutely could. I actually think spaghetti squash would be really nice in here because it always has an even a little bit extra sweetness to me. So really any good squash in here, you know what you could also do? You could do all the same stuff with a carrot puree. You could do it with, I was gonna say eggplant puree, but that's actually kind of gross. <laughs> um, I have a lot of baby food on hand, so I'm always thinking about what kind of purees I can use because I happen to have a lot in my freezer. But stick with something sweet like carrot or squash, but you can really sub in almost anything for this. So I'm gonna 
to get this guy still more pureed, but I'm going to add in some of my liquids here to just kind of help it move around in that food processor. I have got a third of a cup of some really nice apple cider vinegar. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I'm obsessed with apple cider vinegar this time of year. Oh, people are liking the apple cider vinegar, and Stephanie's got a question. If I don't have that fancy machine, which is Ooh. a food processor, what is my next best bet? Okay, so you definitely, you don't need a food processor, but I think because we're doing this squash step where we really want to puree it ni nicely, it is a nice step. However, you can do everything by hand. It just takes a lot more work. So the number one thing that I would do, the number one thing that's most important, is to really break down that squash without the use of a food processor. If you have a blender, you could totally do it in the blender, but let's say you don't have any of that stuff. You just run your knife through it. Just keep running that knife through it. You can get it as mashed up and as pureed as possible. And definitely make sure that you cook it till it's really nice and tender so it makes that step easier for you. But you know what? Once you get that squash into a pureed state, you're just mixing all this stuff together like any easy quick bread. So you don't necessarily need that. I know I didn't have a food processor for a long time when I first started cooking, so I understand that we don't all have these tools. And I do like to always break it down because you can really cook with not very many things. So in there, I put a third of a cup of the apple cider vinegar. Um, apple cider vinegar, there's so much of that out there these days that it's always on my mind. The apple cider, I do love apple cider, so I got some good stuff from the farmer's market. I've also got a half a cup of oil. Oil is also gonna help it make a really moist bread. That's what you're kind of used to when you get a really good zucchini bread. I have got some sugar. This is a third of a cup of white sugar. And then I've also got some brown sugar. I like brown sugar, you know, it has some of that molasses in it. It's gonna give it that rich, deep, caramelized flavor. I just don't like to use all brown sugar because sometimes I feel like it's a bit too much. So I like to kind of leaven it with a little bit of both. Next question. We have a good question yeah. from SCH1022. Mm -hmm. um, they're asking, is, the, is it apple cider vinegar and is it strong in the bread? I've tried so many times to like apple cider vinegar yeah. and I just don't. So guys, um, like I said, sometimes I have apple, apple cider vinegar on my mind. We've been doing some stuff on my passion project, Bluebird and Blackberry with it recently. Been trying it for health reasons, for cooking reasons, all sorts of things. In here is just good old apple cider. Let me show you what I got. So in our recipe, I've got some of this. Just some really good apple cider, which I'm going to resist not just chugging this in front of you because that's what I normally do. Um, Apple cider vinegar, you know, it's a fun thing. People like it. They feel like it detoxes them. It kind of wakes them up. I think it definitely has a purpose. Um, but if you don't love it, mix it with something. And if you really don't love it, just let it go. It's probably one of those trends that won't be around that much longer. So I have added in my oil, my sugars, my apple cider, not apple cider vinegar, and now I've got two eggs. I also snuck a little bit of vanilla in there. And now I'm just gonna whiz this up. And that's it, you know, this is kind of one of those recipes, it's about gathering the ingredients, taking time to cook that squash. There's not much to mess up, I promise it's really that simple. If you can hear me, now also that squash, because it's some liquid in here, it's really easy to puree up that squash. I think that my recipe technically has you puree up the squash and then mix it with all those things. But last night I was making this bread and I thought, why not just throw it all in there and it's a little bit easier. You know, I like to recipe test over and over and over again because I feel like I'm always finding little things just to make it that much easier. I do have this recipe on my site. It's under acorn squash bread on NikkiDinkyCooking.com. I will definitely include that link at least in my story or my feed post. I'm not sure how to do it here, but you can also search for it. And that's it. So now listen, we're just gonna put all this good stuff together. I've got these dry ingredients that I had already worked on. If you're just tuning in, this was my flour, a little baking powder, a little baby, um, flour, baking powder, baking soda, and then some of my spices. I've got warm, beautiful spices in here. Cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves. I mean, if that doesn't start to make you feel like Thanksgiving and the holidays, I don't know what does. So now we're just combining the wet and the dry and I'm gonna slowly give this a little stir. Well, I do. Is there any other questions out there? What's going on with you guys? Someone asked, do you ever work with coconut sugar? Coconut sugar, um, I don't tend to work with a lot of coconut sugar, but a lot of people love it and you definitely could. Um, you know, just whenever you're baking, just make sure to you know look on the label um, and make sure that it's a nice one-to-one -one ratio. I believe it is for coconut sugar, um, but you just wanna make sure that everything is working. I don't tend to use a lot of coconut sugar, 
Um, I don't know, you know, sometimes I use all those traditional things um, and then sometimes I get onto something new and I kind of go back and forth, but at this moment, not a lot of coconut sugar for me. Um, though I have been using a lot of, like I did for the oil in here, instead of vegetable oil, I've been doing a lot more avocado oil or grapeseed oil. That's kind of one of these little trade-offs that I've been making recently that I find is just a little bit better for you um, and such an easy, easy swap and nothing to do except for trade one for the other. You know, there's no sort of conversion there. So that's a nice little trick if you're looking just to kind of keep this as healthy as possible. Though, of course, we're making a really sweet, delicious bread here. That's definitely got a little sugar too. All right, so see you guys, look at how this is coming together. That's it. If there's a couple lumps in there, kind of like a pancake batter, don't stress it. We're good. Now I'm gonna get this in my loaf pan and I can already smell it. Like, oh, it just, I know it's got raw egg. Mm. It's delicious. It's just delicious. That cinnamon alone, but it's not just the cinnamon, it's that little addition of the clove and the nutmeg. It just rounds it out and gives it something more, you know? It's like Cinnamon's older cousin that's like cool, and you invited them to the party, and now you've got a bread that's like, woo! Um, so you know you've all got clover, nutmeg, somewhere in your cabinet, pull it out for this one. Now, I like to make sure that my bread comes out all right. So I've got a little bit of parchment paper, not necessary, but nice. I'm gonna put a little in there. You don't have to line the whole thing, let's not get crazy. I just like a little guarantee of something that I can pull out that I know is not going to stick or it's gonna help my bread not stick. I'm also gonna use a little cooking spray. And then I know that this beautiful bread is gonna come out in one wonderful piece. All right. This is when you start getting excited because you know you are just in the home stretch here. You got a little baking time to go, but then, oh man, it is on. And what I love to do with this bread is, you know, when we're talking about Thanksgiving and the holidays, I love little breads like this. And I find that you can use them in a lot, at a lot of meals. So, you know, I might put a bread like this out, you know, obviously maybe first thing in the morning, you've got some company over. I also feel like it really has a place on your Thanksgiving table. You know, sometimes you're at that table for a long time, you've had some savory or whatever, and before the real pies, maybe you just want like a little piece of this acorn squash bread. And I like it because it's a little savory, it's a little sweet, and so I think it really is very versatile this holiday season. Are you ready? Now, just to be kind to you, because I love you guys, and as much as I like to spend time with you, I don't want to spend the next 60 minutes with you, I have baked off a second one of these, but this would go in the oven for about an hour. It's a very wet batter. It's gonna take time to get that moisture out. But the great thing is because of all that moisture from the acorn squash, from a little bit of oil, we are gonna end up with the moistest, most beautiful bread. Are you ready? It's the big reveal. All right, stay there, stay there. <laughs> Hello, beautiful sir. Would you like to dine with me tonight? I think you would. All right. Okay. If that doesn't look good enough, I just can't help myself. We're gonna gild the lily a little, a little bit here with a drizzle on top. So, powdered sugar in a bowl. A little bit of that same apple cider, not apple cider vinegar. We need just a little, we can always add more and we're gonna create a really quick little glaze. Now I might need just a little bit more of that apple cider vinegar. Oh, Stephanie's got it there, she was hiding it. Well, oh, yeah, that might be a little too much, we'll find out. You know, when you're making this kind of glaze, it's really simple. You're just putting some sort of liquid with powdered sugar and it makes a glaze. Um, but you know, it can, it only requires a little bit of your moisture, a little bit of your liquid. So you wanna start slow, but actually I think that little last drop really did it for us. And look at this beautiful glaze. Okay, so, are you ready for this? Doo -doo. We are going to glaze this guy. I mean, uh, it's, it's just too much for me. It's so ridiculously over the top beautiful. This thing smells like fall in a pumpkin bready thing. I don't know what that means. I can't talk right because I'm getting so excited. And I like a little bit of a topping and I like a little bit of a crunch. I like to top it with a little bit of granola. I always have some on hand for my cereal, 
but I think it just makes it look pretty. You could also do a little bit of chopped cranberry. And you know, don't forget your garnishes this holiday season. You worked so hard to make something like this. Well, not so hard, but you worked hard. You wanna make sure to really give it to people so that when they first look at it, they say, wow, that looks amazing. You know, just make sure to, whether it's your Thanksgiving Day sides or your turkey, finish with some herbs or some cracked black pepper and just make sure that your food looks as good as I know it's going to taste. Are you ready? Oh my goodness, I'm ready. Oh, <laughs> hello friend. Okay, I want you to look. You can almost see just on Instagram or even on Instagram, this moisture there, right? You can see it, you know it's gonna be good. It says, hi, I'm gonna be delicious. And because we use things like the apple cider, because we use things like that brown sugar, we've taken opportunities, the cinnamon, the nutmeg, we've taken all these opportunities just to really build those flavors and make sure that it is not just bread, it is acorn squash, yummy bread. Oh my God, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And I love some of the sides. They got just a little extra caramelized. Oh, do we have any more questions or comments out there? Because I've got to eat. Mm. Hey, Nikki, what's this recipe called and where can I find it? Mm. <clears throat> so you can go to my site, NikkiDinkyCooking.com, and it's under acorn squash bread. I'll also include the link on my story. So there'll be a picture of this bread with the link that you can just swipe up to. Guys, I've got some eating to do. Thank you for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this. I'd love to know, write a quick comment um, if you feel like this was a really fun little live and if I should do it again. I haven't done a ton of them, but I think it's an awesome way just to kind of get out there and connect with you. And suddenly I've got an acorn squash and it's what, like 11 a.m. or acorn squash bread. So I'm just, you know, I'm living the high life. All right, I'm gonna see you guys later. Have a great Tuesday and I'll see you next time. It's really good. <laughs> oh wait, don't do anything. I think you can save it. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just, I hit end. I think there's, who was showing me this away? Are you sure? Yeah, oh, end now.